Hey everyone, I'm Tomorrow 64 here, and today we're going to continue off some more Crash Bandicoot, part of the Insane Trilogy for PC. Now, we're here to continue versus a boss that has made very few appearances in the franchise, but is still lovable to many. Koala Kong. My freaking goodness, does he like flexing? Oh yeah, you know what? I don't even know why I'm saying like he he never made an appearance before. He has made an appearance, but only in two games that I can think of. One, obviously Crash Bash, as you've seen in my playthrough. Though in a completely different fashion than what you see here. In fact, some of y'all probably think he's a rat in freaking Crash Bash, and I wouldn't blame you. <gasps> But the thing is, he did make it a second appearance, and I actually kind of forgot about it at some point. And that was in freaking CTR, Natural Fuel, where he was DLC as well as like Pasadena and Ebenezer Von Clutch in that freaking Grand Prix, where he even has his own level core, which is like Koala Carnival. But yeah, this boss isn't really that much harder either, sadly enough. Ah! Oh my god, I, I thought I got hit. I'm sorry, I thought I got hit. Alright, I'm sorry to be making your ears all freaking go out like that. Come on, there we go. Easy, Claw. That never stops being funny, to be honest. Like, he's just about to go in. He can he can easily make that jump, by the way. But no, a little mi mini cart just says, nope. <laughs> All right. Now we're here on the final island. Already, believe it or not. Heavy machinery. Oh, boy. We're getting to the factory section where they, I think this is where they start processing all these freaking mutants. Ah, yes. You know, this is, I, I think this is one of the levels I actually brought in on, uh, Crash- <gasps> Are you serious? Crash Bandicoot on the run as one of the level, main levels in the game. Like, as well as one of my favorite levels in, uh, Crash 2, sooner or later. Which is nice that they, even though they're just names from the other games, it's clear that their designs are going to be focused on, like, you know, the mobile aspect. Screw it, I'm dying. Oh shoot, I didn't die. Anyway. Okay, yeah. If you couldn't tell, this game actually happens to have its own little hints on uh when they're hiding crates. Uh, t take notes on that Crash 4. Anyway. It's just kind of crazy though that, believe it or not, Outside of like, let's say playthroughs like this, for example, or even freaking guides from back in the day, you would never know to check on some of these uh, like I was about to say aspects, but like these little things that they use as assets of a hint. But the cra but I think the craziest part is that you know that level we just played earlier. Uh, I think it was called like, Lost Ruins. Not not the like. You know what I mean, like Lost Ruins, where we have to play through that. The level legit would not... You know that one aspect where I was running through when I was invincible and I had just ran through like an invisible line of crates? The only reason they actually... You know what's something? That's actually something they changed in the Insane Trilogy. In the Insane Trilogy, they actually added more Wumper Fruit to say, Hey, there's a pathway here. But in the original game... There's only one Wumpa Fruit. And if you weren't trying to get that one Wumpa Fruit, you would never know that they were hiding boxes there. And trust me, it doesn't stop there. It's just crazy how cryptic they decided to make some of this stuff in OG. But the game, but this game will just I'll tell you this in the tip if you happen to catch it before the game loads off. Which is one of those things I was talking about earlier where it's nice that we have shorter loading screens, but if it's the only way to check out the tips, how will I know all this stuff happens without watching a video guide or something like that? 
And that's something I always wanted to talk about with guides and everything. With how much more accessible it is for everyone to complete their games and have like 100% on stuff like that. Like their playthroughs, not necessarily like... Anyway, like complete their playthroughs and everything like that. One thing I've always wondered was how much of that was influenced by guides. Not like that's a bad thing, by the way. Like, let's clear that. Let's clear up that misconception. Just because you use a guide, that doesn't mean you're essentially weak. Like, you're essentially like not as good as someone else because you need to use that. All it means is that it just you just need a little hint. It's not the worst thing in the world. Like, that being said, when it comes to some things like. Uh, like this game, for example, just just with my earlier example, like you're out here trying to like get everything in this game, but you're missing some boxes. You don't know where the boxes are, so you try to turn up to a guide. Then you found out that one little hint with the silly placement of the Wumper Fruit was actually trying to tell you that that's where you're supposed to go. Imagine not having any kind of real hint to that, though. That's that's the that's the thing that's scaring me when it comes to all. Uh, Trying to complete games now because like they always make it feel like you it's like well people are just gonna look up a guide anyway this one's gonna be really tough because there's no way to see up there where your shadow is without turning up the brightness to like 50 or something but yeah like and that's kind of and that's kind of where i feel about with uh crash 4 again i'm not trying to critique the game as if it's a bad game it's just some of the, the co decisions on completing the game is um a little iffy i'll say but, um, that being said, seriously, I can't see that. Anyway, um, with Crash 4, they have a huge, um, interest, I'll say, on making it so levels will have at least one or more, or more potentially, hitting crates. And if you, oh, frick. And if you don't, I think I'll cut to the, after this where I actually make it. But um, if you don't have like a pre-existing knowledge on where the game is, on where that crate is, or just you look every single, practically every single like freaking section, subsection, pixels, or whatever on the screen, it just like wow. Okay, I, I could have just went right here and seen that. How was I supposed to know that? And the worst part is, same thing goes for gems. Like, there's some areas you literally cannot know without just blindly jumping into something. I don't get why the game was like that. Why the game just has this huge interest in throwing out stuff like that. Ain't that nice? Ain't that nice of the developers to put it in this this specific format? Like I know it was like back in the, like back like 20 years ago, so this how L is looked at now is nothing how it was back then. But anyway, like and it's just like what are you supposed to do about that? Like, okay, so what happens if you say you manage to actually beat uh 106% freaking Crash 4? Which by the way. Is it really a coincidence or is Crash 4 really just an alternate version of Rafa Cortex? Anyway, um, is it like, did you really beat the game and all this? And like, well, what's even the point of saying that I, I beat the game without looking at the guide now? Cause like, it, it wasn't like it was, a, it's not necessarily a good thing that I managed to look through this up without having to look it up because the stuff was hidden. Like I, I couldn't see where I was supposed to go there. What was I supposed to do? By the way, I'm already almost over 10 minutes, and this is just the second level of this video. Yeah, second level. Oh boy. We can't get all the uh, gems here, so it doesn't. Uh, all the boxes here, so it doesn't matter. But I like this here. Hold on. I, I should have switched to Coco so you could see that in better detail, but. Oh well. 
uh, it's just like for how amazing the base game is you really have to wonder where all the who was in charge of like the part where you have to try like putting places to pieces together for completing everything cuz like when you have it's kind of like how I felt with Crash Bash actually some of the levels in Crash Bash no less it's one it's fine to have a whole aspect of a level where you just make things different than how you're supposed to normally play a level but when you throw in something that completely just break that completely just makes you have to regret not necessarily regret but have to throw away what you already know about something in crash like in crash bash uh the skyball's crystal challenge oh that's an easy pick right there but like when it comes to that level like that little mini game where you have to check in all that stuff without the red ball but the thing is if you touch the red ball you're dead but if you don't touch it it doesn't score anything but if there's a ball next to it you can't touch that ball either because if you touch that ball there's a good chance you could touch the other ball you see where i'm going at here like it's not that they're throwing away game logic, but I'm not saying they're throwing away game logic by doing what they're doing with Crash 4. It just feels that like you have to go so far out of your way. And that's my big concern. You have to go so far out of your way just to play that way, just to get a box. And it's like, at least you have a camera to look at everything now. Uh, I'm ranting again. I'm sorry. Like, uh, uh, I, I, I actually been 106% of Crash 4, and I'm happy I did. But I'm just not at a good point where I'm just like, you know, I had nothing but good memories at this point. Because I did. I, I, at, some, at, at first, I did have great memories with it. I'm, I'm really sorry about the rambling. But, like, it was, um, it was an amazing... Crash 4 is still an amazing experience. And when I play new game again... I know I'm gonna have so much fun looking at everything, how the how the game feels, how floaty everything is. Like the floatiness when it comes to the short when it comes to like slide jumping is amazing. I kinda hate that the double jump takes away your momentum too, but it's not the worst thing in the world. But it's just oh my god, how the game feels is so right to me. But that's it. So in the next part we'll take care of probably one of my least favorite levels in the game, generator room. Uh, we're coming up to my least favorite in a bit, and I can actually see it too. Oh my god, please tell me I don't have to do that. Please, I am begging that I don't have to do that in the next video. But until then, when we find out, stay war. Stay war! Play CTR.